All right, everybody, Hello. welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode, season two, episode two, two. The Classic of Tea. I see Fernanda is on time and we are on time too this week. We are yeah. getting back into the groove of uh, Sunday Tea Book. Before we go any further, let us know what you guys are brewing. Mm -hmm. And um, we will tell you that we are brewing. Huang Da Cha, a yellow tea. We're super excited. Do you have those teas that you love, but mm. somehow you don't have that that often and today is what we feel. We always love this tea for the summer. It's so refreshing mm -hmm. uh, and it's really hot today. So nice I and think hot. it's a perfect tea for today. Yes, it is a perfect tea. We like this tea. This tea is a really great all-purpose tea. It's robust. Um, you know, it's not subtle. You're going to taste it. It's great in the... Um, it's great on a summer day. It's a great morning tea. It's just a really great tea all around. All right, so welcome back to Sunday Tea Book. Uh, everybody on Instagram, everybody out in YouTube land, um, a little bit to get us going. What is Sunday Tea Book? Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I take a book, a paper, or an article, and we translate it if the translation doesn't exist, or if the translation does exist, we tweak it if there's little misunderstandings or little foibles in the translation. Um, and this week we're doing classic of tea. So you might wonder why would we, uh, oh, I interrupt your little brewing. Did I interrupt your brewing? No. Okay, no. good. <laughs> I'm you, just gonna get brew while he's talking about that. So before you click the X or close the window or turn off the TV or whatever you wanna call it, why would we translate live? Well, over the last five, six, seven years, I have to increase the number sort of constantly, <laughs> Um, over the last five, six, seven years of, um, <laughs> of working with tea and working with translations and, and mm -hmm. asking Jen questions and back and forth, there's so much information embedded in the act of sort of understanding different translations, different texts, that to just present you a finished product on a web page would be okay, but you would miss so much. So for those that are interested in uh, that little bit more or that a lot more, that's what Sunday Tea Book is all about. That is why we do that this as a live presentation on YouTube. And of course, we have a lot of fun with it, right? Uh, um, some of the stuff we've done is uh, you can check on our webpage. We have all of the back episodes. Uh, China Tea by Jen Li Wu, Jen's mom, our tea consultant, a fantastic long form intro to tea. It's so thorough, we call that a tea course. It is a course on Chinese tea. It's a great um, beyond primer. Um, then we did the uh, tea classification and theory and in practice all on our website. And now we're doing the classic of tea because you guys asked for it. Um, a couple of video links down below as well to get you warmed up. Um, but, oh, I should talk about tea trivia time. Everybody oh, loves right. tea trivia time. So that is coming. Instagram folks, if you're I out there. I heard this week is a slightly. This tricky. week is a little tricky. I, you guys know that I always try and make it fun, but a little bit challenging. And I always, you know, we'll see how you guys do. If you guys do great, I'll keep up the trickiness level. If I went too far, I'll dial it back a bit next week. Don't worry. <laughs> but for you on Instagram, you got to head over to YouTube because we're going to wrap up the Instagram live very shortly and just focus in on YouTube because frankly, your, the phone here is blocking half our screen. So get on over to YouTube if you want to participate in tea trivia time. And um, if you already know you're going to love Sunday Tea Book, you can go ahead and hit the thumbs up on YouTube now or hit it on Instagram so other people can find out about this. Um, and if you really want to support the channel, uh, you can head on over to our website and pick yourself up some tea. We publish all the teas that we're going to brew with Sunday Tea Book ahead of time. So if you want to brew with us, you could do, th do that. Or if you just want to grab some awesome tea, head over to our website and do that. That is the number one way you can support the channel and support us and our thriving tea business. All right. So today's Fernanda book. is having some uh, shim nice. for 2018 Ooh. and that. Yes, very one, nice. Oh, I think he's mentioned you were having a shoe for the other day. Anyways, and Eric is having a rose. Rose. Mm, That's nice. Cool, nice. Cool. Just a little bit of uh, uh, introduction on uh, what we're doing. The, what we're doing. No, what we're doing. I mean, a little bit of uh, introduction about uh, some tea book, the classic of tea, because you know it's uh, an ancient text and uh, we mm. are quote-unquote translating it. Um, 
Well, if you have already, go to the link we provided below for the finished translation on our website. You might notice it's a little bit. Um, it doesn't make us a good sense because we're trying to mm -hmm. uh, more uh, how should I say directly rooted in the trying to the, stay true, stay true to the Louis text without adding too much uh, explanations or to make that flow in a more uh, modern and English way. So what he wrote, I translate that. That's what we do. But yeah. it will be also very confusing and sometimes you might like, well, what is he talking about? What does it mean? Uh, so this is why we're here to explain that, to answer questions or explain that in a more detailed way of what's going on. But None of us are, uh, you know, pro translators. So, uh, excuse us for not as perfect English, uh, not as elegant English on the website. And uh, also, I just wanted to say all the translations and a lot of content for this uh, whole classic of tea, uh, the season two Sunday tea book is uh, based on. Uh, a book called The uh, Classic of Teen Narrative and Commentary by Mr. Wu Jianong. So it's more like my uh, learning notes where I read the book and I share with you those interesting things in the book and uh, a little bit about uh, author Mr. Wu Jianong, the founder of modern Chinese tea industry. And he dedicated over seven decades of his life to tea. Um, and this book is one of his most important book in his later lives. Uh, mm. This book is also considered a milestone in China's tea study and with almost 300 references and most of them are ancient texts. So it's a really well um, studied, like a really well researched yeah. book. And besides Mr. Wu Jianong, there are many other tea experts. Uh, prominent tea experts who also helped uh, drafting, editing, proving this book. So it's a authority. This book is the full authority. It's pretty much the authoritative translation of the classic of tea. It's a yeah. real life work study joint. Like, I mean, it just doesn't get more boom than that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and because of that, it's uh, obviously it's an ancient text. It's a it's a complicated work. So we we put out a few primer videos, a few warm ups to this, uh, and the links are down below for those. We have uh, a classic of tea primer link down below to help you understand what the heck is the sort of context of the classic of tea itself. Then there's a Tang Dynasty primer to kind of okay, just 1,200 years ago. How did people think and sort of what was the vibe of that mm. of that era? So that's the Tang Dynasty primer to kind of get your mindset kind of tuned up. And of course, just in all of our uh, Sunday tea books, we have a great video that Jen did about um, pinyin in Chinese and understanding. Because um, we just have to touch on that the Chinese language. So we always have to kind of. Every now and then we'll have to get into the language details and we've got some great stuff for you coming later with that with regards to that. So if you love that stuff, stay tuned. You're going to love this episode. Um, those links are all down below. So definitely check those out when you get a chance. Don't do it now. Don't go away, but uh, check them out later. Um, those are all linked down below. So you were you nailed it with the uh, the Huang Da Cha comments. You know this? this is really I love how roasted it is. Mm. We used to uh, do that a lot last summer to have this tea with a barbecue. It really stands mm. up to the taste. Yes. And uh, it really matches that. I love this, not smokiness, roastiness. The, yeah, it's not a smoky tea. I would, I it's definitely not, would call it a roasty. But smoky. I'm gonna say bye bye to the folks on Instagram. You guys gotta head over to YouTube. We're gonna head into tea trivia time next. Uh, we're going to talk more about the, uh, the, obviously we're going to then dive straight into the classic of tea. So we'll see you guys on Instagram over on YouTube. Bye bye for now. End of the video. This is always the awkward part. Because I have to goof around with the phone while I'm live. Okay, done with the goofing around with the phone while I'm live. So guys, you bared through the introduction. You have earned yourself. Uh, I'm going to push buttons for a little while, but you have earned yourself a trip to our favorite destination. What is that destination? That destination is, hang on, I'm pressing buttons, I'm doing production and being live at the same time. 
The destination is... Oh, darn. Hang on. Title page. T Trivia Time! It is time for T Trivia Time, folks. Oh, I cut off the uh, cheering a little bit early. Uh, I sure hope it works. It's looking a bit funky right now. Right now, but we're gonna get it working. Uh, T trivia game is lit up. It's lit up. Let's bring it to the top. I'm not sure why it's not showing. It's gonna come in here soon, I think. There we go. It's all rolling. Oh boy, it's not gonna work today. That's gonna be awkward. Let me see if I can fix this live. Oh boy, this is really uh, not what I was hoping for. I never like these technical difficulties on a live stream. Oh, I really want to save tea trivia time for you guys. Bear with me, okay? I'm doing all kinds of fun stuff here. See if I can get it to come up. Maybe higher. Didn't work yet. Let me know if you guys can see tea trivia time. I do not think you can. Uh, I don't know why no it suddenly way. stopped working. Maybe press this a couple times. Oh boy. All right, guys. I think maybe I'm going to have to call it. We'll have to save this tea trivia time. Oh, bummer. For next week. Let's just check it once more. That's a bummer. All right. Oh. Well, the good news is, is we're going to dive into the, uh, the meat and potatoes of Sunday Tea Book right away. My apology for the technical I kind of look F forward failure. To it. I love Tea Trivia Time, but I'm not going to lose these questions. I'm going to save them for next time. So all of you people from Instagram who came over just for Tea <laughs> Trivia Time, you can file a complaint with the Better Business Bureau if you feel... If you feel chagrined or, uh, or otherwise deceived, I can assure you that it was not my intent to deceive anybody. Yeah, I saw him uh, work on the tea trivia and it seemed, I don't know, he, he did a lot of work on tea trivia, come up with I all the it. answers and stuff and uh, I was kind of like, oh, look forward to it. I heard it's a really hard one, so next I'm time. Join us next time. It's not really hard. It's just a oh, no? challenging one. I think you guys are okay, up to the task. Come back next week for tea trivia time. I will have that ironed out. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. All Hopefully. right. Okay. Okay. Let's dive in the meat and potato about the classic of tea. The classic of tea. So just a quick summary. I think it's good to do a summary as a... Uh, we're still in chapter one. Yes. Last week we touched a little bit of that because we spent a lot of time uh, explaining. And basically in chapter one, uh, though it's quite short, if you see the uh, uh, posted translation on our website, mm -hmm. it actually, uh, Lu Yu actually touches on several aspects of T. Uh, the title is Origin, but Mm -hmm. uh, he expands beside the geographic origin. He yeah, talks he about, goes into every facet of origin, doesn't he? Yeah, the origin of this, uh, the character of tea. He also talks about the tea plant, which can be considered like the origin of the tea leaves in your cup. Right? He also talks about the how to grow uh, tea or the tea plant's growing condition. And uh, he talked about the quality of fresh leaf and even some health benefits of tea. Even back then, that was the big thing. Mm. Not the big thing, it was a thing. It was a thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so continue from last week, we talked uh, talk about uh, the characters and uh, there are some, let me see what we did. Oh, the look of the plants. Mm -hmm. Which we're getting into a little mm. bit more today. So. He also mentioned uh, uh, the condition, the growing condition of uh, tea, like uh, in terms of soil, light, uh, temperature, micro environment. It's a very concise style of writing. And uh, mm -hmm. one of the interesting thing in translation is, uh, uh, which is, uh, there's a sentence called Ye zhe shang yuan zhe xia, which oftentimes you will see people translate it Actually, yeah. almost all the time you will see people translate it as the wild is uh, better than teas that grow in the garden, which is totally correct. But just wanted to, to add something fun that, uh, uh, like in the uh, pinyin video, I pointed out that uh, Chinese characters could have multiple meanings, depends on how you make the word with it. So uh, the character ye and the character yuan in this sentence if you uh, interpret that as a yesheng vis-a-vis 
uh, Cha Yuan. So yes, it's talking about wild vis-a-vis -vis garden. This is more like uh, talking about uh, how the tea plants are managed. And uh, well, on the other hand, you can also uh, uh, interpret that as Shan uh, Ye uh, and vis-a-vis -vis, uh, plan Yuan Di. So right. in this, uh, if you uh, go with this route, it means is that in the mountainous area uh, or is that in the uh, plain area? So this statement is more talking about uh, where it is grown, yeah. the geographic, uh, the landscape. Yeah. So it's a two element, but in both elements, the original statements are both true. Uh, right. Just to say uh, for translation, people don't really put it both, but I just want to add it a little bit there. Right, because we, t in modern times, we tend to think of the wild garden must be the romantic, exotic, um, you know, like a garden that's just left alone and gone crazy, right? Mm. But it, it could be this other notion of plain versus mountain. Yeah, it's just those characters that have both meanings in yeah, it. Yeah. So it's very concise and you can uh, actually understand that maybe Louis intended to say both ways. Who knows? It, yeah, it could have been like maybe a double entendre. Mm, yeah, yeah. And uh, then Louis go on, on talking about uh, uh, growing tea plants. I don't know if any of you guys have a tea plant growing at home. I don't. The climate here doesn't allow that. And it's quite fun. And you can really see the difference between uh, now and old times. Um, he pointed out that uh, teas are sold directly and they cannot be transplanted. It mm. is true at that time because the agricultural skills and techniques, it is very hard to transplant tea. It's slow to get readapted. But nowadays, actually, it's almost the opposite. Uh, mm. Most of the tea right. gardens and stuff are using transplant tea rather than growing from seeds. Yeah, so, if not clones. Mm. So it's a piece of information I tell you about that time, but it's out of date there. And right. because that kind of a property or character of tea, tea also get a nickname as bu qian, means doesn't move, uh, doesn't trans transplant. So tea it. actually got the nickname bu qian. Yeah, which uh -huh. means doesn't move. Stationary, stationary. fixed. Stationary, yeah. And uh, hmm. it also, tea also uh, sometimes be used as a love token on wedding, like a, as a good a symbol or a good wish of a you know, long lasting marriage because of this not changing. Like Makes that. sense. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. I didn't know that uh, either till I read the book. So that's something I, I thought pretty fun to share. Yeah, yeah, that's a, so this was actually, like a tea has such an interesting history. It, we've got the tribute teas, which were given to the emperor, but it was also given among families and whatnot as a, as yeah. a wedding gift. Like, yeah, it's a pretty, because of its meaning as bu tian, like doesn't move. Yeah, just fixed. a symbol, you know. Right, like, a symbol of a long lasting hope that you stay together for life. Or yeah. if somebody doesn't leave early from this plane. Do you have that in the Western way? Like any symbolic things? I'm sure we do. I'm gonna I'm gonna lean on you guys to let us know if there are sort of traditionally symbolic wedding gifts. I'm totally blanking out. I remember the tradition of sleeping with the piece of wedding cake under your pillow so that you dream about who you're gonna marry, but that's a little bit more uh, woo. Wedding cake under the pillow? Well, you wrap it in something. Oh, oh you gotta wrap it. Yeah, okay, you, don't just, you don't just stuff it sense. under there and <laughs> that would be like, nasty. No, that wouldn't work out. Lots of uh, laundry. <laughs> But yeah, there's other wedding, like the, if there's some Western or in your culture, there's and wedding traditions. it's not like a gift, it's more like a... A, a, a wish or like a, a symbol? A ceremony. A symbol. A part, part of, of the ceremony okay, thing that okay. you do that. Got you. So, uh, continue on. There's a little phrase that is actually pretty interesting. And a lot of translations I have been reading, like the English translation just skip over that part. And... Uh, you know, not translated, or some of them translated wrong. Like uh, oftentimes, I see people talk about horticultural skills is not good. So this is four character is called e er bu shi. So this phrase, uh, oftentimes I see either not translated or translated as uh, horticultural skills is not as good. But uh, here, uh, the character e is actually modern times we 
associated. If I see this word, if it's not ancient Chinese, I think about skills and stuff, and that kind of makes sense. Okay. But this is a uh, ancient Chinese which uh, uses the how should I say the root or very basic, the very basic meaning of this character, which is a verb meaning uh, planting. Oh. This character, if you see what's the original meaning of that, is planting. Okay. So uh, it actually means... And it, nowadays it's skill. Yeah, okay. most often used as skill. Okay. I think okay. that's why people extend it as a horticultural skill, to ah, translate they, that. Right. Yeah, but here it's actually just meaning planting. The sentence is just to say, um, you know, the planting, uh, the planting without using the seed or the planting without packing the soil too much. So it's okay. usually that kind of a translation here. Commonly understand it. Yeah. And that's the right one. Mm, mm, not horticultural skills. It has nothing to do with that. Right, right. I have a quick, unre slightly related kind of question about that character. I noticed the top. Is that the veggie hat? That's the veggie that's hat. That's the veggie and hat. And you will see that veggie hat a uh, dash with the two Thing that's veggie hat. The top of the character e. mm, a mm. lot in this book because of the, we're talking about veggie horticulture grass. basically. Yes, yes. Yeah. We call that grass hat. <laughs> grass hat, yeah. Yeah, because of the other one you have a wood side, which right, is a right wood. Right. This is more like Ooh, nice, okay. Yeah. I'll get a top up there. Yeah. Nice. Mm. I didn't use the filter today. That's okay. We got to sift with our teeth today. Mm. So you put three, four grams? Four grams. Yes, four grams of Huang Da Cha in a, I don't know, I guess this, this guy one I've never measured, but I think it's in a 90 to 100 zone, mm -hmm. just based on a quick look. Now this, this is like the Thank third force infusion. Take a mini break. <laughs> Eric had a comment about the cups, so maybe we should give them a close up of the cups. Mm. And I will shamelessly plug the cups. I think, do we? I should unplug them if we're out. We still have some, I think. Check the website. We might have some other colors. Oh, the color is very. The color is pretty and it's, uh, it's, it's a. It's a little bit overexposed. It's, it's like... a deeper, like. Uh... What? I can explain the overexposure. The tea oh. is so dark, I cranked up the brightness a oh, little bit. So, okay, because okay. the tea was so dark. So yes, the okay. tea cam is a bit overexposed. But I uh, have this. Yeah, we can show them. Right. Oh, nice. No, I'll no, show no. them right in the main one. Okay, I think the main one is more true to its a uh, real color. What I'm seeing. So it's a nice. Uh, yeah, these are hand etched, and uh, gorgeously etched, lightly. You know, very fine. Mm, I love the hand etch and mostly the edge. I love how thin it is. Mm, it's really fine. thin. Yeah. Yeah, it feels right. You know when you use a lot of cups and you sit, yeah. you feel the the details of the cup on your lips. Yeah, I've seen some comments about cup thickness where people prefer thick, either thicker gaiwans or thicker cups to prevent finger burn. I'm the opposite. I prefer Thanks. them thinner to allow me to know quicker it's too hot and also they cool quicker once you dump the water. I find the thick ones for me sometimes they get, if I, maybe I brew too fast. And uh -huh. I brew, 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 and then suddenly my guy one is like a little hot coal. Yeah, yeah. Can I don't like the thick one either. I like that thing. Mm. What I do you like? That. Let us know down in the comments. Do you like a thin, fine porcelain, or do you prefer your earthenware a little bit more meaty and meaty. chunky? <laughs> mm. I just love when you talk and I have that aroma in my mouth and just uh, let it... Oh, the no, aroma the tea? Just enjoy that uh, aroma. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said you like when I talk. Did you say you like when yeah. I talk? Oh, yeah. and my, oh my goodness. No, when you talk, I don't have to talk. So I can experience oh, the go. aroma of the tea that really okay. lingers. Okay, that's better. I okay. thought you thought my, my breath smells good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, that's a little bit. Uh, but yes, you can actually breathe over the tea. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's continue this. Um, Okay, this is the uh, fun part coming up, okay? So talking, Lu Yu also spent quite, a, quite some uh, time talking about fresh leaf quality. And he mm. uses some 
uh, comparisons and metaphors to do that. Uh, the very first he was talking about a purple vis-a-vis -vis green. So uh, purple mm. leaves are better than green. Uh, just to point out, because nowadays we have talked about purple teas or yellow teas, white teas, what are those teas? He's not talking about tea category. He also not talking about purple tea cultivar. He talk, right. So as you can see, nowadays for us, we have purple tea cultivars. We have yellow tea cultivars. That's just in the field, you can see that huge mm -hmm. color difference. And also we even have red tea cultivars. There are way more tea cultivars nowadays. But for him, he is simply talk about without talking about the cultivar, just the leaf itself has that uh, purple, more purple hue in it vis-a-vis -vis the more traditional green. And that's, what does it mean? So what happens if uh, within the same cultivar, there's a, you know, color difference and stuff. Usually right. when you see that in the field, it usually implies that there's, first, it could be different cultivars uh, mm -hmm. mixed in. Some cultivars just tend to have a purple bud, then become yeah. green. Yeah. And second, it could be the, say, the sun, you know, under the strong sun and right. uh, that could, with strong direct sun, that would cause even the same cultivars to have some, this plant is just regular green, while the other green plant is more purple when you first have the yeah. shoes. Uh, and also, um, you know, growing condition can also affect it. But when we see those purple uh, colors in tea leaves, it uh, usually means it has a higher nutrient, nutrition of a low word. Coming Antho up. Antho, I'm trying. Okay. Anthocyanidin? And yeah, here, here is the- I'm not sure I got that right that. either, so. Anthocyanidin, like the blueberry, the what make blueberry blue. Yes, yes. Or red cabbage. Uh, like all those uh, purple, yeah. dark, uh, it's a color. So I, if, you, if I understand correctly though, like I remember in, on our tea trips, your mom would point that out to me in the mm. tea field. Yes. We'd be standing in a row of bushes, in a row of, um, in a row of bushes, and she would say, hey, come over here, Phil, come here. And you know, in Chinese, I would go there, because I know, she'd say, hey, come here, and show me that. She'd say, see this one? It's like a, maybe more purple, maybe it's paler, like we were talking about. Same cultivar as, it's, uh, as the dudes all around him, the bushes all around it. And you know, she would explain what's going on. Sun, water, a uh, little difference. Taste it, a little yeah. bit different. When you side by side with the bud, you can even have the little, you know, it's not, doesn't taste anything like finished tea, but you still have those hints. Mm. Um, so really interesting to see that. So yeah. in this case, Lu Yu is not talking about purple tea like the, the cultivar. He's talking yeah. about those ones. That, yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, Eric has a good question. Is shade help purple or heavy sun? It's a heavy sun, direct, straight sun. Okay, uh, that's interesting. Make that, uh, so this and, and so, Anthocyanidin. 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 Those anthocyanidin. It's a kind of a polyphenol, and it's actually a bitter source. So right. uh, Japanese tea shade it, so the green actually pops, right? So it's right. the opposite. Anyway, so it's bitter. Uh, nowadays, like not modern technology, usually we test the tea leaves and see their uh, compositions and know, okay, this tea is great. This tea from this region is good for making say blue black tea or green tea right and usually this kind of a, um, a high and so cyanidin usually Nailed we it. consider it's not good for making uh, for making black or green tea because it's more bitter uh. but at his time right he went through you know the the tea goes through a more complicated uh, mm how should I say, rougher process yeah. and different way of drinking. So have a higher uh, anthocyanidin also means it's more robust. It can tolerate this sort of exactly. so, the manhandling or whatever it got through that yeah. more rigorous process. Yeah, if it's in this cool. time, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily be still full truth in today. Yeah, yeah, which is sort of going to be a recurring theme over and over, right? This is a 1200 years ago, lots mm -hmm. and lots of change, but still really interesting insights into 
uh, what was popular at the time and how it's manifesting nowadays. So cool. Yeah. And he continues to come uh, explain that uh, tea leaves that are bamboo shaped uh, is better than tea shaped. Mm -hmm. So first, what's bamboo shaped? I think uh, if we talk about bamboo, maybe people are thinking about the green, the thing. Yeah, uh, the I was I was thinking about the leaf. Right. I thought he meant the leaf shape when I first read it. Right. It's a bamboo. Uh, usually, if we say bamboo, uh, so, uh, means so. bamboo shoot. So what it look like is the layers. The skin is layered and layered and layered. So uh, in terms of tea, it will look something like this. You know, mm -hmm. more tightly wrapped and not quite open and uh, heavy layer. Do you see the similarity? I don't know, Chinese style of uh, metaphor. <laughs> yeah, and, and this was really important for me because I was thinking he's talking about, you know, you know, a bamboo leaf is kind of this shape and I thought maybe it was, oh, it's the leaf shape to the leaf shape and you don't want a short fat tea leaf, maybe you want, no, nothing to do with that. It's more about those wacky bamboo shoots you see up there, which are delicious by the way. You peel off those rough outer ones, inside is really tender and super delicious. <laughs> and the similarity in how the bottom tea leaf has those layers. So I completely missed that metaphor, but it's not so cryptic. If you're a native Chinese, or is it? Maybe I don't know. Maybe it's a tea. People know this. I don't know because you, you recognize you, soon. You talk about the bamboo shoot like that. We're, we're thinking about that a layer. Thing. Right, yeah. and soon that is soon. And if you remember, Guju's a soon. That's the soon in yeah. Guju's a soon right there. <laughs> nice point. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was yeah. pretty pro. So let's talk about the implication. What is mm. a bamboo and teeth? Uh, teeth means oh, by the way, teeth not like we were think about uh, like uh, that kind of a uh, you know how do you say oh even teeth teeth means it's a pair usually teeth grows a pair up and down or stuff so what it's oh. saying is it's teeth shape i just look up something that is in a pair kind of thing like that you, if you look at the top of the top of the branch, top of the stem, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, it's like open. You don't even see much of a butt. It's a pair, fully open stuff, oh. right? That's what it means by teeth. And uh, usually uh, talking about plants, again, in the same kind of field and stuff, you see that usually either the bamboo, the tea plants that come up first with the bamboo shaped uh, buds and either means it's a superior cultivar itself right. already. There are cultivars just tend to shoot new buds like that. Or this plant itself is very healthy and robust and strong, growing vigorously. They would have that. That so bamboo, that more, that bam more tiny densely, row. tightly yeah, packed. Weaker bud. plants tend to have this. But this picture doesn't mean anything because I just look for a picture that indicates the shape. Right. This is a Tie Guan Yin uh, plant mm. and for Wulong you want it like that. Right. Again, something mm. that didn't apply at the time of writing mm. at all. But yeah. yeah. Cool. So and just want to point out uh, sometimes if uh, mm, I, I think I read uh, some translation just didn't uh, translate this uh, teas and bamboo thing or some uh -huh. and sometimes you can see the written says uh, instead of teeth, they say bud, because in Chinese, these characters, if I show you here, you will notice they're awfully similar. Is it similar? So you see the veg veggie or grass head on the top? You mm. put a grass head on the top, then the left. Oh, they are pretty similar. Yeah. You squish that down to make room for the grass hat, yeah. right? The, the little yeah. tippy top. You, so, they are pretty, it's, okay. Okay, okay so. Me, yeah. <laughs> You gotta know how to like put them together. I then think you if, can see and that. I think if you know how to write Chinese characters, it, it the similarity is pushed. It's get it get much closer. Yeah. Right? So uh, the one with the grass hat. Nowadays, if we just look at it, if you ask me, just to explain this word itself, it means butt, which mm. also could make sense in the in the book. Right. Uh, but because of the structure and the metaphor used, it's usually very uh, uh, symmetric in ancient texts. So it's a, actually the right one, which literally means teeth. Ah. Yeah. And in ancient times, those are two same characters you can use interchangeably. Uh, so, so they were also, identical in that time. Yeah. Oh. 
So yeah, they had the meaning. To, you can have different. They uh, had to be contextually derived. Yes. The, the detailed meaning. They were, yeah. I guess, I don't know. Somebody will tell us what those are. I was going to say homonyms, but I think that's when they sound the same. But it might be when they're written the same. I'm not sure. I'm looking at you, time signature. Yeah, we need an expert. We to help need us an out. expert. <laughs> he came in. I couldn't help. I laugh in the middle of your talk because he said, "Holy Anthosia, something, something, something." Something. <laughs> Hello, folks. Excellent. And last bit. Oh, I keep missing your oh. brew. I'm trying oh, to catch your yeah. brewing, guys. If I keep missing it, there we go. Tea break. Everybody have a sip. Let us know how your tea is tasting. Mm. Throw down some tasting notes. Um, we'll chat about those in a while. This tea is so, uh, like you say, they let the aroma. And when you fresh brew it, the aroma kind of wafts up and fills yeah. the room. I yeah. like that. That's that robust, roasty. It's a great yellow tea in that sense. You often, we often think of yellow tea as being a really, well, not often, but some of them are very delicate, uh, high end, um, and that's great. This is a really nice one that it's robust and everyday uh, tea. accessible, nice, really yeah. everyday. Yeah, you don't accessible. have to wonder, ah, uh, what's the difference between green tea or yellow tea? Yeah, this <laughs> one's really straight up, no issue. I don't know about you guys. When I started, I really didn't like yellow tea because it's like, you know, when it first tastes them, they're really similar. I can't admit that, but maybe <laughs> it might be true. So back to, oh, well, you look really serious. I'm really serious. I was so, thinking of doing a little, um, starting a little contest, but I'll talk about that later. <laughs> yep. Stay tuned to the end to see what the contest might be. Yeah, I will stay to the end. <laughs> okay, back to the um, article and he continues to talk about fresh leaves in terms of a flat or curled and uh, he point out that uh, curled leaves are better than flat leaves. Uh, this again is another indicator of a cultivar because the cultivar we know like a Tieguanyin or we know like a Longji that's cultivar mm -hmm. but there are tons tons a huge number of cultivars and a lot of them were uh, in recent, uh, say, 50 years after scientific sifting and stuff, uh, those low yield or low quality, mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. a pretty watery taste, no matter what, mm -hmm. those, uh, a lot of the cultivars are disappearing because people just don't want it. Right. Uh, and those good ones, the co-resistant, high yield, the great tasting quality ones mm -hmm. are more mm -hmm. promoted. Uh, so yeah, ancient times, you don't have signs, right? Yep. You just uh, it's trial work. and error, baby. Exactly. So what he discovered is that, and it's proof quite right here. In the picture, what I'm showing is the curl. So if I just say curl, you might think the leaf could curl like could upwards be this way, could or be downwards. This way. Right? Right. Usually, the new ones are downwards. Uh, the good ones. That's really tender. The, the picture is the cultivar for Liu Wan Gua Pian. Uh, uh -huh. This cultivar naturally just have this. So once more for folks, they might have missed that cultivar name. There you go. I got Persimmon it once more for you. That's it. Leaf. It means it's a big leaf, and uh, uh, uh -huh. is a green tea. Uh -huh. It's funny, it's so relative to green tea. Office. It's a big yes. leaf. Everybody's looking at that leaf going, what do you mean a big leaf? I've, I drink Puar, that's not a big leaf, but it's relative, right? It's relative to the yeah, green. Relative and also, uh, you know, big leaf is not, it's, and a lot of things are big leaf. White sure. teas are big leaf, you have yeah, green yeah, tea, big yeah. leaf. Uh, you even have small leaf uh, pruars. So oh, and if it's Luan, these are just popped it. open too, right? Mm -hmm. Just if it's Luan, these are just full open or something like yeah, that. Yeah, those are mm -hmm. tender. So with the mm -hmm. Luan Gua Pim, it's actually, we say, oh, it's made with the leaves. Uh, some people might, uh, you know, just get into tea, think, oh, leaves are not as good as bud, but those are not just a full open leaf. Those are young, just open leaves. Mm -hmm. uh, and the highest standards are made of all those leaves that are curled. Mm. Uh, a little bit more, wow. how do I say, side effect, or a little bit more technical of uh, those. Why it's good is actually that angle is like a solar panel. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't see solar panel flat, flat. 
like for, flat facing up to the sky yeah, or flat yeah. facing Usually down. you angle a little bit based on the sun yeah. and stuff. But that gave the more uh, efficiency in terms of the, the conversion, use, or conversion, the yeah. use of a solar energy, similar to leaves. When they have that, they also is more uh, efficient in using solar energy, cool. so yeah. accumulating uh, nutrients and stuff. Nice. Uh, one of the reason why it's uh, like better. Cool. Yeah. So in the end, I just want to summarize when he talk about, uh, you know, the shape, the, the color, uh, the shape and the, uh, the, the, the flat or curl, it's uh, just considering they don't have the more like a number or data uh, way to speak right. that, but to tell you what's quality, um, what's a better cultivar is still recognizing those. So it's a... Uh, uh, I would like to say it goes beyond just the look of the plant. It's actually talking a little bit more than that. Yeah, more how it manages through the process. And I guess they must have done tons of sampling. Obviously, they're drinking lots of tea. He's traveling around drinking tea, so he's able to, you know, taste the process differences and kind of filter that out in an organic mm. way. It's really fascinating. Mm. All right. Last but not the least part of the book is he also talk about the health benefit. Oh, right. Um, we have a video talk about TN uh, health benefit. Mm -hmm. I'll pop the link uh, down below. It's mostly because not... uh, uh, people often have questions about the caffeine. Uh, what's the caffeine level? Uh, roughly, mm. we say all oh, black tea, green tea and stuff. But there are so many factors that could affect the, the level of uh, caffeine. Yeah. Uh, same with actually, this is a funny, uh, dent, my dentist uh, talked about this with me before. Fluoride? About, not fluoride, oh, oh. it's about acidity. Tea. Oh, right, right. Tea is slightly acidic. Right. And mm -hmm. because they have a chart, you know, lemon, milk, cheese, uh, it's a level. And the tea is a uh, black tea and it's uh, acidic and stuff. Tea is acidic, no problem. But if you look into how acidic is tea, they're pretty much similar to caffeine. There's a huge level of right. really acid acidic tea depends on the soil, environment, harvest time. Processing, uh, of course. Processing and mm -hmm. uh, the whole quality of things. So in terms of how acidic is tea, it's uh, pretty... Pretty could be quite big a dynamic range. Yeah, yeah, and um, you uh, you know in terms of how tea is anti anti this anti that, uh, I think you can have tons of those informations on any website. You just Google it. A few things I just want to highlight is uh, you know cultivars, the process, those also have a great impact on nutrition. What are the nutrition right. and its levels? So they're not a tea, they're all the same. And right. also, um, I mean, brewing way, right? If I cold brew, if I use hot brew, there's a different, uh, like a different nutrients that have a different, uh, like a dissolving temperature mm -hmm. and uh, time. Those also affect it as well as uh, so your cold brew is quite different than your hot brew. Just fundamentally, what's in the liquor yeah, is going to yeah. be Yeah, certain nutrition mm. needs a certain mm. temperature to be fully dissolved in water. So mm. there's that. Also consider, you know, interaction between different uh, nutritions. Are they working together to be actually better when they work together or they're counteractive to each other? You know, canceling out their effect. Um, you know, and all, overall, how much tea do we drink or how much mm. in the tea that we actually drink to have that kind of a health benefit? I'm just saying, like, it's quite complicated right. than just I drink tea, it's a good anti-cancer, anti-aging because it has that. It's more complicated. In yeah. the end, we yeah. just, uh, personal opinion is I drink that, I enjoy that, and it's not harmful. <laughs> so you know have all kinds of tea different teas and yeah and remember health is a lifestyle thing right yeah. so how in the in the classic of tea how much of the um of those points was he talking about the nutrition and the, the temperature and stuff or you no know, he was more in the chinese uh, traditional uh, tcm style TCM, early tcm yeah, because tea is cooling it's good all right. times you know you can even use tea for 
medicinal use. Yeah, so I remember the, the toothache in one of the videos I linked down below, the primers, we right. talk about how to treat a toothache with tea. Yeah, right, so. yeah, so here's more from that aspect. Nice. And ending comparing, you know, tea with uh, ginseng. Uh, right. Uh, not saying they're the same and not saying in terms of ginseng, same, I don't think it, it's suitable for everybody. But uh, just to say, when he mentioned that, it's more show that uh, how precious it is to right. him that tea is just as precious as ginseng. I think that's the main takeaway. Right. Yeah. And that's a really important thing in Chinese culture, right? Ginseng and health, mm. right? Yeah. Nice. Okay. I think that's all my notes for chapter one. Um, which is available on the website already. Chapter one is fully translated up there. This video will be joining it soon. So uh, give us a while to do the uh, magic that we do. And then both of the uh, videos related to chapter one will be on that web page mm. as always. Um, and a little bit different than other Sunday tea book, just to reiterate, um, this video, we don't go, we don't just read out the translation, but you, you'll mm. have the translation pretty true to the text on the website. Right. which is, albeit quite cryptic. So the video is like a companion to that translated text. Yeah. Hopefully that serves as a great reference for you guys for the days and years to come. Yep. And Eric says that they wish, uh, he wishes there's that, uh, like a pH testing strips for caffeine level. That huh. would be really handy, actually. It would be interesting. And it is a great point. I was mm. going to mention it when you were talking about that, that really even, um, you can't even say that, oh, we, like we generalize, we kind of say the tea categories have about this much caffeine, but you go from one oolong to another oolong or one white tea to another white tea. And, um, you know, probably even the batch is going to have different uh, caffeine levels. How different? Absolutely. I don't know. I think the main thing for me is I, I drink tea for the flavor. I enjoy it. Yeah. It's certainly not bad for me. And there's a really high limit on how much you can drink or really high before, <laughs> before you need to really worry. I should be careful about that. The quality matters, okay? And I'm really lucky that I drink really great quality tea, like Huang Da Cha and yeah. all the other teas we have, but yeah. Like the Tea Morning said, in the end, I drink tea because I like the taste. The health benefits are bonus, so that's what we... Yeah, the health benefits say. are just a little fringe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys, that wraps up this week's episode of Sunday Tea Book, mm -hmm. the classic of tea. Tune in next week. We will have tea trivia time. I will fix that. Oh, darn. <laughs> um, and um, until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.